The President is authorized to enlist and employ in the territories and Indian country a force of Indians not to exceed 1,000 to act as scouts who shall receive the pay and allowances of cavalry soldiers and be discharged whenever the necessity for further employment is abated at the discretion of the department commander. From the time America was first settled by European colonists, Americans often enter into conflict with the Native Americans. Disputes over land and resources are the most common cause for belligerence. As Americans' population increases and settlers look to the West for new lives and new opportunities. Indian wars continue intermittently in America until 1924 and throughout each conflict, the United States employs Indian scouts, natives, that are friendly to the cause of the Americans. In the Indian Wars during and after the American Civil War, native scouts prove invaluable in their speed, aggression, and knowledge of terrain and tracking. Much like the irregulars that came before them, the native scouts hold little reverence for the decorum and customs of the regular soldier. The uniform of the Apache Scouts in 1870 is described as a muslin loincloth, a pair of point-toed moccasins, and a hat of hawk feather, while the 1877 Crow were reported as wearing an old black army hat with top cut out and sides bound round with feathers, fur, and scarlet cloth. Regardless of their inability or unwillingness to rigidly adhere to the ways of the typical American soldier, Many of the Indian scouts commanding officers sing their praises, one of them commenting that Uncle Sam's boys are too slow for this business. When hostilities begin to cease on the frontier in 1891, the number of scouts is reduced to 150 and the soldiers are split among departments in Arizona, Missouri, Texas, and Washington, D.C. 17 native scouts are Medal of Honor recipients and the insignia adopted by the Indian Scouts in 1890 is still in use today by the United States Army Special Forces. On the morning of June 28, 1914, an act of terror will send the world to war. After a failed bombing attempt, terrorists aligned with the Serbian Black Hand shot and killed Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria. When Austria-Hungary declares war upon the Kingdom of Serbia, World War I is set into motion. Whom will America's special forces call upon to restore peace in a world at war? What new advances in tactics and technology will aid these individuals in their peacekeeping efforts? How will these outstanding soldiers contribute to the present and future War on Terror? Today, acts of terror the world over spread chaos and loss of life. Shadowy organizations work to undermine the freedom and well-being of people in developed and developing nations. After September 11, 2001, United States military, in particular the United States Special Operations Command, SOCOM, has taken a more active role in counterterrorism efforts especially in Afghanistan and other countries known for harboring and supporting terrorist organizations. SOCOM operates under a set of guidelines known as the Five Truths. Truth 1. Humans are more important than hardware. Truth 2. Quality is better than quantity. Truth 3. Special operations forces cannot be mass-produced. Truth 4. Competent special operations forces cannot be created after emergencies occur. Truth 5. Most special operations require non-SOF assistance. The second truth, quality is better than quantity, means in essence that a small number of people, carefully selected, well-trained and well-led, are preferable to larger numbers of troops, some of whom may not be up to the task. This is as true today as United States Special Forces combat Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and other terrorist factions 
as it was when an act of terrorism ignites World War I on June 28, 1914. Mr. Mayor, I come here on a visit and I am greeted with bombs. It is outrageous. In June of 1914, under the order of Austria-Hungary's Emperor, Franz Joseph, Archduke Franz Ferdinand observes military maneuvers in Bosnia, afterward planning to visit Sarajevo with his wife, Sophie. The Archduke plans to dedicate the opening of a new state museum in the Bosnian capital. Ferdinand is a proponent for the combining of Serbian lands with the current kingdom of Austria-Hungary and is perceived as a threat by some Serbians. Assassins, aligned with Serbia's Black Hand Movement, a secret military society with aims to liberate Austro-Hungarian South Slavs and unify Serb territories, first make an attempt on Ferdinand's life at 10.10 10 a.m. on June 28, 1914. As Ferdinand's motorcade makes its way from the train station to a town hall welcome meeting, one of the assailants, Nadelko Chabrinovich, hurls a hand grenade at the Archduke's car, but the driver, seeing the threat, speeds up just in time. The grenade bounces off the back of Ferdinand's convertible and rolls under the following car in the motorcade. No one is killed, but the explosion leaves a crater in the street and injures about 20. After the town hall meeting, Ferdinand and his wife Sophie decide to deviate from their previous plans and visit the hospital where victims from the morning's bombing are being treated. On their way, the driver makes a wrong turn, and as he turns the vehicle around, Gavrilo Princip, another of the assassins, steps forward and fires two shots into the car, killing Ferdinand and Sophie. The resulting tumult in Europe is then called the Great War. Later, it will be called World War I. The United States will not officially enter the war until 1917, but in 1916, Dr. Edmund Gross, an American physician, and Norman Prince, two expatriates already working with the French military and Air Corps, respectively, work together to form the Lafayette Escadrille, a unit of American volunteer airmen fighting for the French. The hope is to persuade the American military away from the position of neutrality they had adopted. The response was overwhelming. The Lafayette Escadrille received so many applications that a second unit was created, the Lafayette Air Corps, with an estimated 300 American volunteers. The spirit which pervades them is something above the spirit of adventure that draws many to war. It is the spirit of a man who has found an inspiring duty toward the advancement of liberty and humanity, and is glad and proud to contribute what he can. United States shifts towards intervention as news of atrocities committed by Germany, especially the sinking of the Lusitania, become known. With the close of the Great War, many thought the immense conflict was the war to end all wars. Sadly, 22 years after the Paris Peace Conference, the world will once again find itself at war. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.